Hello friends, uh, Kim Wagner here, in case you're new, uh, if you're not new and you already know me, hello again. Uh, I am here tonight with my dear friend, I can't stop calling you that, <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen. Uh, she's here visiting from North Dakota and we're going to walk through the garden, talk a little bit about what I've learned this year. Kathleen is getting ready to start a different kind of gardening, kind of a small uh, raised bed type plant, or what do you call it? Like uh, we're doing raised beds. Container gardening. Square foot gardening. Square foot gardening. So they're doing things a little bit differently, but I'm gonna let her ask me some questions about this type of gardening, and I'll see if she can teach me anything too, which I'm sure she can, cause she's super smart. All right, so first question you asked was just now what do i know about composting if you don't have ground and the thing i would say is on amazon actually you can find really cool like compost containers and they're about you're so much taller than you <laughs> <laughs> they're about maybe waist high some of them and you just put your compost in there and you add, so you have to add like dry compost, like leaves and things like that. But you put in scraps or whatever, your dry compost, and then you just turn it every once in a while. And that can create your own compost. And that's a great way of doing it instead of what we're currently doing, which is just like piles of compost all through our garden. Just super attractive. Uh, yeah. So thoughts on that? Oh no, that's really interesting. So we will be, we're looking into container composting as well as container gardening mm -hmm. because we do not have ground to compost on. So I don't want it to go to waste and so yeah. that's good to know. I will look into those containers. I will say compost is one of those things that I, like it intimidates me, but not for like logical reasons because it's basically just the act of things breaking down and that happens just as naturally as like your garden does. So you just have to provide it a good like situation to have that happen. Well, I think what's made it the most overwhelming for us is that you get out there and you read, if you don't get the um, equation right between your green and your browns, then right. you're gonna have a big stink pile and you're not gonna get it right and it's not gonna compost right, which I didn't even know you could compost wrong until I started looking. So <laughs> it got overwhelming when we started looking. And then when you're looking at the fact that you don't have a ground to put it on, it's like, oh, well now how do you do it? <laughs> Yeah, I feel like, yeah, absolutely it can because I mean, that's what happens in your fridge, right? When you like forget things in the fridge, uh, then it becomes like this really gross, stinky mess. <laughs> but more likely than not, you're gonna be just fine and things will work out. Look at the watermelons. Look how cute that one is. Oh no, it's so tiny. Got some eggplant that so eggplant will go hard just like squash will once they're no once they're past their prime. Things I did not know until this year. What are the pretty purple flowers here? Are those uh, intentional? That is intentional. That is blue. I call it borge or boar, borge. I don't know. People call it different things. My children are screaming. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure it's borge. Borge, borge. It's really pretty. I like the purple and the blue contrast there. Mm -hmm. So this is good. This is great for um, bringing pollinators in. Although the pollinators have gone real quiet as a bee runs into me. But we don't, we just don't have as many. Although I'm lying because I'm seeing honeybees all over this. <laughs> is this arch just not fantastic? I just wish that it had, I had stuff on this side. I'm excited to try noodle beans. I am too. I heard it on your last video and I was like, I need to know what a noodle bean is. What is it? <laughs> and I'm letting these guys dry so that I have plenty of noodle beans for next year. So yeah, we'll have at least one full trellis of noodle beans. So I think that that raised bed that you found the other day that you shared with us, I think we're gonna do the wall on the back end of it so that we can do the beans on the back end. Okay, but yeah. just like mm -hmm. I had shown you, so then we'll be able to probably even put the tomatoes in there too. Instead of putting them in separate pots like we had planned, 
because they had nowhere to climb. So I think if we string this up in the back and then let it climb up here. Yeah, I think vertical gardening is one of those things that's really underrated. So actually, let's look at this. Um, this is what happens to tomato plant when you don't prune it at all. And that's not even true. I cut half of this tomato plant off. Um, so that giant mess at the end, that is one tomato plant. Now, if you had, if I had pruned that and let it grow vertically, it would have taken up much less space. This probably takes up maybe a five by 10 foot square space. And that's just one tomato plant. So pruning and vertical gardening is great. Um, and then these cattle panels, you can actually buy, let me back out. So these are the long cattle, long cattle panels, but you can buy half cattle panels. Um, and I will try to drop a photo right now of what we are talking about as far as the idea of like a smaller planter box with a back drop that goes up um, or a, a cattle panel that goes up the back for growing. Look at the loofahs, they're so big. Guys, this is why you stay on top of weeding. This is gonna be a nightmare next year. What are you most excited about actually for your first garden? Honestly, the tomatoes especially the black cherry tomatoes guys i didn't even know what they were until a, what, a week and a half ago uh -huh. i showed up and i tried them and now amelia picks them from the garden from me and she's like auntie i got your favorite tomatoes <laughs> yes you did baby girl so i'm the most excited about those um lettuce we're gonna try to put lettuce in there and i'm excited to see where that goes and then jose is gonna have to be a chili plant like a hot chili plant see what we can get out of that so those are the top three that I have to say we're the most excited for. I was excited about tomatoes no matter what. I just didn't know what kind I wanted to plant. I knew I wanted a small and I knew I wanted a large. Now I know I want black cherry tomatoes. Now I gotta find a good big tomato, which I think I wanna go with that yellow tomato that you planted. That big one that we had the other night, wonderful flavor and it's beautiful to look at. Yeah, Eric's really been enjoying yellow tomatoes this year too. Um. I will say for anyone at home who's wondering a good lettuce to plant, I've really enjoyed the Four Seasons. Hmm. Uh, it was so popular here, actually, the ground squirrels ate it all. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> come on! Uh, but it's called Four Seasons because it supposedly grows really well even through winter, hmm. like super cold, snowy winters. So it might grow extra well. <laughs> in North Dakota. Arctic cold. <laughs> I cannot get over these corbachi peppers. Look at them. So one thing I will say is I love these, but I would grow many, many less. I think I have like 20 plants of these and I'll probably grow half as many next year. Can we just talk about the purple bell peppers and how pretty they are? They really are, aren't they? They're so pretty. I love those guys. I already love bell peppers, but that was really pretty. Yeah. Um. So I have to ask you what your greatest accomplishment for all of this is, this being your first year gardening and taking on such a big thing. What would you say your biggest success and then what would you say your biggest fail is through all of this year? My biggest success hands down has actually been just doing it. Cause this is something that we've talked about doing for a long time, maybe not to this scale, but this is something that we have talked about doing for like a really, really long time. And one thing always got in the way, like we never, mm -hmm. we just never did it, right? Um, partially, I think, because we were still not thinking this big and sometimes you don't get your dream until it's like big enough, right? Like God is like, nope, you're not ready to think inside the box I want you to think in. Um, and so just doing this, that's definitely my biggest accomplishment. I told, um, my mom brought a friend out to see the garden and he was telling me how like leery he was for me about having a big garden. He wasn't convinced that the way I did the beds was right and different things like that. And I told him, I was like, even if I don't get anything out of the garden, like I still did this much and that's amazing and I'm okay with that. It was just me trying to be like, yeah, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but like looking back, that's truly like just starting, I think 
is the hardest step and the one that I'm most proud of. Ah, uh, my biggest failure. Not planting this bed because there was literally no reason to not plant it except for I kept thinking, oh, I'm gonna buy strawberries and put it in. Oh, I'm gonna wait and do something else in that bed. And I just never planted it even though I could have at any time during the year. And so that's probably my biggest failure. Like there are plants out here that haven't done well, but there's like a million reasons why plants don't do well. So being like, oh, I'm such a failure because my lettuce didn't grow. That's not really fair to you or to the lettuce because you're still learning, I'm still learning, but not even trying to learn. I think that is a big fail for me. Those are vine peach melons. And I gotta say to whoever's naming things, stop naming them after peaches. <laughs> okay, it doesn't taste like a peach. Just don't put that in my head before we, even start. I got excited for your butternut squash. Mm. Oh, are we doing that tonight? Yeah. No, not tonight. I'm going to do it later on in the week because Eric said that they taste the best harvested, eaten within a week of harvest. Oh, okay. So we'll harvest that and make that. That's going to be good. Yeah. What do you think is going to be the one thing that stops you from having a successful garden next year? I can tell you it's gonna be the same thing that stopped me every year and that's fear of failure. So we're gonna be kind of like you were last year and we're just gonna go for it. And we're gonna do and whatever happens, happens. And then, yeah, it's fear of failure. That's always held us back. And I've just feel this calling to do it. Like we're there. And we always had an excuse that stopped us from doing it too. So like our excuse now is we don't have a place to plant it because we can't put it in the ground. But then we come out here and we see that you're not putting it in the ground and that just got the wheels turning. So I started looking, you know, there are people in New York with tiny banisters, or not banisters, what are they called? Um, like like patios. patios yeah. And they've got a garden. It's not, it's not to this scale, obviously, but they still plant things that they love. And so if they can do it, and you can do this, I can make something grow somewhere. So we just have to learn how to do it. It's about advancing the dream. Eventually we'll have one in the ground, but start where we can and do what we can. Learn along the way. Has there been other times in your life when you've been nervous about like failing? The fear of failure has kept you back. Yeah. What was the thing that like made you just do it no matter what? What did you tell yourself to get past that? Uh, just, well, what is it that Dave told us? Not letting perfection be the enemy of done. And then just learning to accept that, you know, failure happens and learning from those failures and picking yourself back up and doing it, you know, okay. So you learn that, hey, it didn't work this way and just keep trying and just keep pushing forward. And I don't know. That didn't sound very wise. <laughs> no, I think it did sound wise. Because right, the thing that stops us all is like, well, what if, what if, what if the plants don't grow? Or what if it looks terrible? Or what if the food literally rots on the ground, on the plant? And then people make fun of me and know that I'm a failure because gardens are big and loud and you can't start one without people seeing your mess. But the thing is, everything you've ever tried, you've probably failed at. Maybe even just once. Remember walking. <laughs> um, what is the thing that you're gonna tell yourself or remind yourself next year when it's hard? Um, just that this is another step of learning. What did we learn? Instead of looking at it as a failure, it's going to, I'm going to ask myself not why did I fail at this, but what did we learn from this? Okay, so it didn't go through the way that we planned. How could we do better? What do we need to do better? What do we need to do differently? Uh, not even better, just what do we need to do differently? And then just pressing on. That's the main thing. I have this dream of serving my family homemade spaghetti sauce on a homemade meal and that's the goal. How do we get to that goal? So it's just 
pressing on and taking it all as a lesson. We harvested potatoes last week. My nails are, are still dirty from that. <laughs> not last week. When was that? La yeah, last, last week. Last Friday. Last yeah. Friday. Um, what was one thing that you learned then that you didn't expect to learn while harvesting potatoes? Um, oh gosh. How awesome purple potatoes are, number one. <laughs> Those things were awesome. I think the purple potatoes came out bigger than the gold potatoes did. Um, how easy it really is to start potatoes, because that, I think, starting potatoes was one thing I find really intimidating. Do you get the store bought? Do you start from store bought? Do you have to go to a nursery and get special starters? How do you start potatoes? I'm literally going home with a bag of potato starters from Kim's Garden, guys. Like, it's super easy. I'm really excited about it. Um, we had tried to grow, my family had tried to grow potatoes in the ground and they didn't turn out really well and so I think that's what helped intimidate me. And then I found out about growing potatoes in a container and then starting See, there's always an excuse along the way for why I can't do this and oh, I can't move forward and oh, it's scary. But now I'm going home with starters and we're getting a potato growing bag and we're gonna grow potatoes next year. <laughs> yep. Uh, potatoes are super easy. If you're not growing potatoes, stop what you're doing and plan on growing them next year. Unless you can't because, I don't know, this, is, this plant <laughs> is attacking me. Uh, unless you can't because you don't have the space, but as Kathleen is telling you right now, you probably do have the space. And that's one thing I'm hoping to do next year is get Kathleen to send me some videos of how her garden is doing so we can let you know how that's going. Maybe she'll start her own YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, and then also I want to show you guys some container gardening because I've never done that so I want to see how it works um, and pass on any knowledge that I can to you. I'm excited to see if we lay to rest some old wives tales or if they're true about certain things you know is my mint and my container next door gonna come to life in the middle of the night and attack my other <laughs> <laughs> herbs and stuff are my potatoes really going to expand because we're gonna do what is it hilling uh -huh. mounding mm -hmm. mounding um, we're gonna work on that in the container and so we're gonna see do they actually grow upwards I'm excited to see where we get how far we get with it yeah look at the size of the squash <laughs> So we have given up on harvesting <laughs> zucchini and actually a lot of squash. So the zucchini plants are just getting massive. There's somebody in our local area actually who wants squash for her pigs. And between that and then just using it in compost, that's what we're gonna be doing to kind of help um, feed, the, feed the soil, feed the community. Yeah, should be good. Oh, I meant to ask you what these flowers are. They're really pretty. These are hollyhocks. And I just have to say, I heard that hollyhocks take two years to bloom. None of my hollyhocks have taken anywhere close to two years to bloom. Uh, because this is the first year they've been planted. So obviously they didn't take these any. These were fun. Aren't those so pretty? They did, well, the ones that we harvested, we harvested too late. So they were rotten already not or rotten they? but they were for fermenting these are tiger melons i think is what the name i is was going to call them mango melons <laughs> <laughs> i got stuck on the the peach vine peach the vine peaches over there yes um yeah so those were they were not very good but that was a me fault not a oh these are pretty fault. so that's coxcomb this is probably one of my most favorite things to plant. Let's see if I can. Uh, we will definitely have these in our garden next year because they were just so beautiful. So those yellow tomato down there, right there on that vine, uh -huh. I think those are the ones that I want to plant. The flavor in them is just amazing. Um, can you imagine a yellow sp uh, spaghetti sauce? <laughs> Yum. <laughs> I will say like I'm not a big fan well I'm not not a fan of yellow tomatoes but like that wasn't yellow tomatoes were something I grew because like I wanted to try it but not necessarily because I was thinking it would be good but they have just been a hit over and over and over again so yeah. if you haven't tried yellow tomatoes try it 
Look at this guy. He's so cute. All right. Anything else we should talk about, Miss Kathleen? I am sure you're gonna get a ton of questions from me as soon as we get started on our garden. But thank you for letting me poke around in your garden and learn a little bit and be a bit more confident and like I can grow potatoes. So. I firmly believe anyone can grow potatoes. Hi, Mom. I can grow potatoes, anybody can. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, we are gonna eat dinner. It has been a long day. I think I actually have one more video I'm gonna try to film tonight. Maybe not, we'll see. Um, but until next time, I hope you have a good time <laughs> and I'll see you later.